Welcome to Highline BI 348 class video number five. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, BI 348 chapter seven start or the finished file, click on the link below the video. Now we've already gotten busy in this workbook from the start file. We created this sheet quad, fixed cost, variable cost, profit, created our model. We did some work on goal seek. But now we want to see a data table. And here's the deal. We saw with goal seek and by manually changing an input like quantity, we could see the different profit possibilities. But with a data table, we can simply tell the data table to look at one formula in our model and give it a whole range of new values for our decision variable or any particular variable and it will spit out all the answers. Now I want to copy this model over to a new sheet. I'm going to highlight this. And before we copy it, I'm going to come over and click on Calculate Revenue and use our keyboard Shift F11 to insert a new sheet. Double click. And I'm going to call this one space V space data table because there's two different types of data tables, one variable, which we're going to do here, and a two variable. All right, so now I'm going to go over to our sheet, Control-C to copy, and Control-V. Point to our smart tag and say, keep source column width. By the way, we're copying these sheets over just because we're learning. By all means, we could have done our goal seek and our data tables all on a single sheet, which is often the times what you do. But we want to keep it simple as we're learning. All right, now I'm going to scroll down here. And again, here's the idea. We're actually going to do it for a number of formulas. And I'm going to start with this formula. Well, this formula for total revenue, of course, depends on this 2,100. So I want to put, for example, a 0 into this formula, a 500, a 1,000, all the way up to, say, 6,000 units and have the data table spit out all the answers. Below this, I'm going to create a new column of all of the inputs, meaning 0, 500, 1,000, 1,500, et cetera, for our formula to look at. So I'm typing quantity, home ribbon, and I'm going to add some dark blue fill and some white font and this border here. Now, guess what? I could type 0, 500, 1,000, 1,500. I could even use a copy trick. But uh-uh. These are going to be formula input. So I'm going to come up here to our formula input area, data table start unit value. And that's going to be 0. And then we're going to type data table unit increment value. And that's going to be 500. I can already see. That shouldn't have currency. So I'm going to do Control Shift Gray accent tilde to apply general number format. Now I'm going to come down here and very carefully say equals and click on our data table start value and enter. Now I'm going to create a formula that looks at the previous one cell above a relative cell reference and adds our increment. Now we need to lock that increment. So I click the F4 key to lock it. Control Enter. Now I can copy it down. I don't know how many to go. 6,000. I'm going to stop right at 6,000. These are going to be our inputs for our data table. Now I'm going to highlight with the borders. Now those are formulas, and I would like to add that. But for the time being, I'm not going to. Now here's the thing. We have a label in all of our new decision variables for quantity in essence. But in order to get this to work, the data table is going to slap all of the new formulas instantaneously here. But it's got to know which formula it wants to substitute this quantity into. And here's the weird thing. You actually have to put the formula. Now normally, we would like a label here, especially if we're going to make a chart from this what if da analysis data table. But hey, we have to say equals. And we're going to start with total revenue. We're actually going to try a bunch of different of these formulas with the data table and hit Enter. Now notice, that's kind of just there all alone. It's violating our rule that we should always have proper labels and whatnot. But that's the way the data table works. And at the end, we'll, we'll do something. We'll put a label over here so it's not as strange, just a, a lone formula here. But here it is. We have our inputs. 
we have our formula or a reference to our formula. Now you simply highlight all of the values that are going to be substituted in, the actual formula you want to do the substituting into, and now we go up to data, what if analysis, and data table. Now, there's a keyboard in 2007 and later, but the keyboard in earlier versions is easy. Notice it's called a data table. So we can simply go Alt-DT, and there it is. Now, the data table has what's called a row input cell and a column input cell. The way you have to memorize it is it's saying column input. That means all of the new quantities. And because they sit in a column, that's how they name this. Now I have to click on the original formula input. And data table feature will look at this formula. It will know that it's supposed to change that formula input by putting all these various values in. Now when I click OK, Check that out. That is totally amazing. Now, if you try to change or delete any one of these, this is a special type of formula. It doesn't even say what kind of special formula in here. It just says cannot change part of the data table. But from our earlier studies in Business 218, we know that if we were looking up in a formula bar and we see curly brackets that were automatically put in, that means this is a type of an array formula. And sure enough, the process delivered a bunch of values and entered them in as an array. So you actually can't change any one part of it. But there it is. And we can see exactly at 2,000 that it gets exactly the right value. That's what if analysis using data table. All of these various values are being thrown into this formula here. Now actually, I'm going to highlight this whole thing and move it. I'm going to move it by pointing to the edge. And that cursor right there is the Move cursor. That's the Selection cursor. That's the Angry Rabbit or Crosshair. We want the Move cursor. And I'm going to drag it down one. Notice we are allowed to change the whole array, move it, but you just can't change an individual part. Now I'm going to add some uh, borders here. And I'm definitely going to put Total Revenue. I want a label up here. Now we're going to do something totally cool. We're going to delete all of this because, yes, we have one variable in a column and we used a one variable data table. But guess what? I can put all sorts of different formulas as long as they all use that decision variable. And for each one of these columns, if I invoke only the column input, meaning a one variable data table, it will change all of the formulas. So this is pretty profound here. Now I want total revenue. Then I want Total Costs tab. Then I want Fixed Costs tab. Then I want Total Profit. Hopefully, I spelled all those right. F7 to check if they're all spelled right. Now, I'm going to come up to C, D, E, and F, and then click on one of them and drag. I want to make sure they're all the same size and they're all fitting the labels. Now, I'm definitely going to come over here, right click, Mini Toolbar. There's our Format Painter or Copy Formatting Only. I'm going to click and drag. I clicked. I didn't let go. I clicked and dragged, and I want to format all of those. Now, I'm going to reference up and get my Total Cost Formula. There's my Total Cost Formula tab, my Fixed Cost. Now, this is kind of a strange thing. but because we don't have a formula for fixed cost, but I'm actually going to need it because later I'm going to make a fixed cost variable cost chart. So I'm going to do something really crazy here. I'm going to click this. It'll actually just copy it down because the decision variable doesn't affect it. Tab and then Total Profit and Enter. Now let's highlight all these and highlight with some borders. And now the trick is, here's all my new inputs. I highlight all of the formulas at the top of each column, a bunch of empty cells below. And now when I Alt-DT for data table, again, this is a column input because the, the values are sitting in a column. I simply, I don't click those. I click the original decision variable that each one of these formulas is using. And when I click OK, that is amazing. That means I did one if analysis on a bunch of different formulas that had this particular variable here. 
Now I'm going to come over, I'm going to highlight the inside of this and at least add that green there. And to indicate that these are formulas, I'm going to do Control B and I'm going to add a label over here. So I just put a, a label pointing their formulas from original model at Q equals 2000, Control B to bold it. That is pretty amazing. And you can see that here's our 2000 here. And these are exactly the same values that we got when our decision variable was 2000 up here. That is a data table. And it is amazing, especially when the formulas in your model, you have many, 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 many formulas leading down to some summary formula. And using formulas, because there's no problem with this partic these particular formulas here. We could create some formulas and not use data table. And actually, I have an example over to the side that you can look at of exactly that. But when you get a complicated model, the data table really comes to the rescue. You put all of the new decision variables you want, and data table will slap them into as many columns of formula as you want. Now, in our next video, we'll see how to have a variable listed in a column and a row and do a two-variable data table for what-if analysis. All right, we'll see you next video.